Welcome to another edition of Micro Welding Tech, the only podcast dedicated to welding at a micro scale. Subscribe today to stay on top of what's new in micro welding technology. So January 26th, uh, here we're going to be talking about some of our micro welding solutions, but specifically talking about the Micro E and the Pico DC uh, power supply. So I've got Laren Dodge in here, uh, Director of Engineering, and Dave, uh, our Director of Sales, Marketing, and Products here. Um, we're excited to talk about some of the cool things we've got. Um, first question up is for Laren here. Uh, the Sunstone Pico DC welder, when paired with that micro E head, monitors both the force and displacement via closed loop feedback. What companies do you think would uh, benefit from that digital small minute feedback? Uh, companies, uh, general companies would be medical industry, um, automation, but specifically they're going to be welding small, very small parts. It could be a wire, um, it could also just be a, uh, a piece of metal like a nickel strip or some sort of strip of metal. It could also be uh, thermocouples. We have thermocouple that it does this, it welds those things very well. And so, yeah, if you're looking to micro weld, that's what you're going to want this for. Very cool, yeah, I know, know we designed it with a lot of flex circuits as well in mind. Those flex heat pads, heat circuits, flexible circuits would be a, a good application for it. Um, awesome, let's go a little bit deeper into that. When we speak of that force and displacement, uh, where exactly is the force being applied and what is being displaced exactly? Cool, yeah, um, the force is actually being applied directly to the electrodes themselves. So. The uh, electrodes will come down on, on a workpiece, and once it hits that workpiece, it'll apply a force. Um, and you get to just decide on that force. Uh, so if you say 500 grams, you'll see 500 grams of force on that workpiece. Um, once that happens, the, uh, the system will take the measurement of that position at that point. And that's where displacement comes in. Once the weld starts, we, get, we gather the information for the position, the first initial position. And once the weld ends, we get the position at the end. And then whatever the difference of those two are, that's your different difference. Um, and then you get the displacement. And you know how much displacement occurred during that weld, which is good data for most people. Um, that's what they're going to want to know, really, is how much did I displace during that weld. Um, and if it goes out of tolerance, then it's not a good weld. Very good. So it's actually the movement of the electrodes, the displacement, how much they moved in the electrode during the weld process. Correct. Very cool. Why is that, uh, why would uh, production uh, floors, production companies prefer closed loop feedback? Exactly. Production floors, they need as much data from their systems as possible. Um, and so the more data they get, the better. Um, and so by getting the closed loop feedback and it's uh, the displacement, um, you get position feedback as well as force. Um, and the welder itself does uh, voltage, current, power feedback as well. And so all that information, temperatures in the system, anything that they can gather, they're going to want to get that information just to know that their weld was good and, and that they can reproduce that every time. I think what's really cool about when you add all those variables that Larry mentioned, um, you really can zero in and, and make a repeatable weld, right? If it's monitoring every aspect of the weld at every stage throughout the process, and you've set it up so you have your tolerances and your acceptable ranges, that's where these guys are going to want it because they can guarantee that each weld was identical from one piece to the next rather than there might be user error or electrode contamination and if you didn't have the system in place that part would go through without, without any indication. So it just gives you that better quality control. Exactly. Awesome. Um, both the Pico and the Micro E uh, represent breakthrough products new for Sunstone. Competitively, competitively, how do they fare going head to head with other DC mark, DC welders and uh, weld heads in the market, Dave? Oh, very good. <clears throat> um, yeah, we've put a lot of features into these these two products. Uh, when speaking of the Pico, the we we put everything in the same box. The monitoring is built into the product. So you not only set the weld parameters, but you also set the monitoring values as well. And it's all contained in the one unit. So that's kind of a breakthrough um, innovation that we have. Rather than having the welder, and then you have your separate monitoring equipment, it's all combined in one. Just to make it easy to set up, easy to use, easy for those two systems to talk because they're now one and the same. And then the Micro E product, uh, moving into that one, we've, we've gone that route because it's a, 
It's an electromagnetic linear actuator built into a weld head. So we get all of those built-in controls and the ability to monitor those, again, all built into one core um, product that's at the core of that, that weld head. And so we get all the benefits of those without the complexity of piecing together a system. So if you look at what we've got, they're probably the two easiest to set up, easiest to pair, and easiest to use uh, combination that, that exists in this, in this market. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Laren, from an R&D perspective, what changes were made within Sunstone to bring that Pico to market from the ground up? Yeah, the, the big ones were the fact that we wanted to make it as uh, compact as possible, um, getting all, just as Dave was saying, we needed that uh, so we didn't have to have two or three boxes. Um, the whole biggest reason we want to, the reason why it was going to sell more versus our competition is because we didn't have extra boxes that had all the different monitoring capabilities. And so because of that, now you've got this uh, Pico that is a very micro welder. It can do very small things. Um, the cool thing about it is uh, Sunstone before this obviously did a lot with capacitive discharge, um, but it's kind of our first time we dabbled in DC, just straight DC output um, and uh, fine control. And that's where you can finally get that closed loop feedback going and, and it helped quite a bit in the industry. I don't know if I actually answered that question, so ask that question one more time. Yeah, no, I think you, I think you did. From an R&D perspective, what changes were made from Sunstone to bring that Pico to market from the ground up? Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that power supply mentions, right, that we've this is kind of our first true DC output uh, welder. Okay. Dave, what has been the market reaction to the Pico so far? Um. No, it's been a solid, solid initial reaction to the new product. Um, <clears throat> had a meeting with the sales team uh, this morning, and we're going through and forecasting, and we're 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 over we're overselling for what we forecasted. So we're already kind of to that point where we're productions realizing they need to be uh, manufacturing more than what they have been and what they forecasted. So from there, from that standpoint, from a sales standpoint, the yeah the market's ready for it and excited for it, and. Talking to the customers who are using it, the product absolutely is meeting the expectations and, and meeting the needs. So in that way, it's a it's a huge success thus far. Well, the cool thing is, is something to bring up at this point too. Uh, we didn't design this thing to be put onto a robot, onto a table. But just the other day, a customer wanted that's it, right. right? Yeah, that's right. So we were able to outfit it onto this table, and it actually worked out really well. Um, got that out just last week, so yeah. it was exciting news. Yeah. The different things that customers can use this for. Yeah. Well, that's one of the feature sets, too. I don't know if we mentioned it, but just that it is automation ready. It's got the full PLC connections. And so we were able to implement it in that way, hook it up to the robot. It has all the, the ins and outs, and it can, it can be put into a ta onto a table or put into an existing line and uh, it start interfacing with, with the system. Yeah. No, that's great. Uh, Laren, do you want to speak a little bit more to... What, what it means that it's automation ready and what, what do we build into it to make it automation ready? Yeah, so the, the Pico, like our other systems, it has a, uh, what we considered basic PLC, but essentially has the ability to have some inputs and outputs. And those inputs and outputs, there's quite a things it can do. Um, some of the inputs are a trigger, uh, just a typical trigger from the PLC. You also can control the counter, a weld count. You can reset that counter. A couple other ones there as well, uh, the outputs, there's a whole range of warnings, uh, errors, uh, buzzer, just different control that, and at different points in the weld. If you want to be able to, hey, say if a bad weld occurred, go ahead and throw a light or throw a buzzer. Or you have complete control of that, and those inputs and outputs are just on that basic PLC connector. Um, it also has a scheduler too, so you can choose a schedule. So you have a, a, a set of welds, uh, weld settings that you have on your system. You can choose to, hey, I want to do my weld setting number one, and the PLC can actually make that adjustment for you on the fly without a customer or user having to come to the welder and type it in themselves. They'll just tell, hey, I want schedule one or saved weld one. You know That, that makes that very ready for automation. Uh, to be able to trigger, be able to set up the weld, um, choose the weld that you want, and then go for it, start welding. Awesome, and how do, how do they connect to the welder? How do they connect their PLC? It's through the 8-din connector on the back end. And so you've got eight pins uh, well-defined on the user manual, so you just gotta check that out and figure out how you're going to connect to that connector. But we, we send that connector with the units. They're gonna be using it for PLC, and then that's how it, uh, it can communicate. Uh, one known cool thing about it as well is 
Um, we have it built in to be able to, in the future, be able to do Ethernet communication on our advanced DP line, which is already integrated with that, um, and the Pico, where we have found out that it's going to be in use, used in automation at this point. Yeah, we, we're going to need to throw that in there at some point um, to where it's full control PLC at that point. So that's why the difference between basic and advanced PLC, we, the distinguishing factor is that once you go advanced, you can actually connect the PLC through Ethernet Modbus. And once you have Modbus, you've got complete control because then you can change any setting on the welder and choose any, well, any safe setting on that system. Uh, if you want to just go in and change the uh, hold time for that wave, you can go in there and quickly make that change from the PLC itself and go back to welding. Very cool. Let's talk about the look of the Pico. Uh, obviously, Sunstone has a very unique uh, approach and look uh, that they are kind of trademarked with a, with a big touchscreen display. Um, and most of our welders have that. Um, how does the Pico maintain that look and, more importantly, that feel for the operator? Yeah, I, I, what's what's fun and fascinating about the world we live in today is everything has a touch screen. Um, it's just the new norm. The benefit of that, though, is we can utilize that same real estate, the same, um, the same, uh, what is it, 10 inch screen on the? On, on it's eight inch. An eight on inch. The we have an eight inch screen, and with that same eight inch screen, we can display infinite numbers of interfaces, infinite numbers of screens and parameters, versus. You know, go back years and years where these welders were controlled with a membrane switch or some knobs and dials. You can't just swipe and get a whole other set of knobs and dials. You're stuck to what you have. So having the touch screen opens up so many possibilities. Uh, you can display all the information. You can access information. You can have just an output screen where you can just read the values. You have the other ones where you can input the values. And using touch screens just really opens up the user experience to have full control and a better uh, usage of the machine. So for us, where we've got the capabilities and the expertise to program our, our interfaces and to make them look cool and, 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 and user friendly, it just really, the end result is, a, is improved user experience. Yeah, and we, we uh, specifically chose capacitive touch just because it, it gives that feel of your phone. People are used to that kind of a touch on that uh, touch interface. Um, and so we chose that path because it very uh, it makes it so that you can actually touch the screen in a way that they're used to touching it. And what the cool thing about it, like Dave was saying, is we can make that as advanced screen as we want or as basic as we want. And so some of our systems, they don't require the, the advanced knobs and a hundred different buttons. It just needs one or two buttons, and we can do that. We have that flexibility, yeah. which makes it really cool. That's great. Now, this is the, uh, obviously the Pico and the Micro are awesome, cool products. What, what's next for Sunstone? Only the best, right? <laughs> We've done the smallest so far. Yeah, yeah. No, what's really exciting is we're kind of, Sunstone as a company is kind of moving into the next, the next phase of, of our progression, I'd say. We've got a lot of projects going on with our engineering and, and development side. And um, yeah, what's fun is even though, you know, we're doing micro welding, the world of micro welding is growing. And so there's plenty of opportunities and plenty of projects kind of, uh, you know, that are, that are active, active projects that we're working on. Not to spill any, any teasers, but there's gonna be some fun, exciting products in the next, the next little bit, the next near future for what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah, very cool, yeah. Things are exciting for Sunstone. Stay tuned for what's coming, right? Absolutely. Yep. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you for joining and, and listening in. Um, this will be the first of many. That concludes another edition of Micro Welding Tech. Got questions, comments, or topic suggestions? Call or text 801-658-0015. Remember to subscribe today to stay on top of what's new in micro-welding technology. Thanks for joining us.